Welcome to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic, where we uh, aim to answer your bike and tech related questions. And myself, Oliver Bridgewood, and, and Miss Dave, John. John. So, oh. with, um, as ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comment section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. Uh, Alex, this right. week's first question. Who? <laughs> right, first question this week is from Munz Noor. They say, when I spin my new wheels, which have a 36 tooth ratchet hub, it slows down quicker than my three pull free hub wheels. Two different brands. Would this reflect out on the road that the 36 tooth hub has a high increase in resistance, i.e. is it gonna slow you down when you're free wheeling? Is it a disadvantage? I am going to say it's going to make absolutely no difference whatsoever when you're out on the road. Whilst in theory, there is a slight little bit of extra drag with the momentum of just a spinning wheel, you on the bike, it's going to have no noticeable effect. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah? Like pretty minimal. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to break it down, maybe the tiniest bit, but no one's ever going to notice it. All right, next question over to you. Um, Ralph Spenneberg says, do you remove old tubeless milk or sealant and clean the tire and rim before refilling. One, I hate it being called tubeless milk, it really upsets me. It's not milk. No, it's not milk. Um, well, seeing as I love tubeless tires, shall I kick us off with this? Go for this? it. You don't have to remove old sealant every time you go to replace it. It's good practice too, and it really depends on what type of sealant you're using. So the Silka sealant, which we recently got, that has a shelf life, well, when it's inside your tire, sorry, of around three months. They then sell a tubeless sealant replenisher, which you just add into what's inside your tire and it sort of turns it back into a liquidy kind of state again. But other brands that are out there may require you to clean the sealant out and then re restart fresh. If you were going for like absolute optimum performance, you can save a bit of weight by cleaning out that dried sealant and putting yep. some fresh stuff in. Um, however, in my experience, I tend to find that with the if you ride a lot, I tend to ride a lot. Mm -hmm. Like the, the the tire wears out before, like I I would get to that stage of wanting to actually scrape out the sealant. Yeah. Like I think by then I've already got a load of holes in the tire or the tread has worn down because I've ridden so much. So that's the other thing. I mean, it's quite a lot of work. I would rather just top it up, keep going, and then yeah. you know. Um, do it that way, yeah, it's, it's not an essential thing to do. Yeah, you got the option for both. Um, right, next question is from Martin. They say, hi guys, I have a question about, well, hoping to ask our Pirelli Tyrex, but unfortunately you've got us at the moment. Would it be possible to design a tubeless system without requiring sealants, as is done with car tyres? So, right, the, um, using the proper ERTO standards. ETRTO. Yeah. Yeah. To me, to you. <laughs> the, um, the, the a tubeless wheel and tire should inflate without sealant and hold air. Yeah. Um, some other tubeless tires, like when tubeless tires on road bikes started to happen, yeah, there wasn't these standards in place. And certain tires, I remember, I had some like Vittoria tires that didn't hold air very well without sealant. Other tires I'd use did hold air without sealant. It depends on the tire. So. Yeah, they will actually do it, but you run it with sealant because that just helps it hold air a bit better yeah. and it uh, also can repair punctures on the go. The other key difference with a car tyre or an automotive tyre and the road bike tyre is it's better to have sealant in there because the pressures are higher. Yeah. So like a road, like a car tyre, they run, you run it at like like two, two and a half bar. Way lower pressure. Yeah, so yeah. like... I mean, you could you could make a road bike tyre which didn't ever require sealant, but you're just going to have to make the tyre far thicker and more robust than it needs to be to make it 100% airtight. Yeah. It's like false economy, really. Whereas we want low rolling tyres as well. Yeah. Low rolling resistance tyres. Yeah. Speedy boys. Next yeah. question I feel like is generally aimed at you. It's from... Kito Nichura, they say, hi tech team, is a beard aero? Uh, you were at the Wintel the other week. Yeah, we've got a video coming out uh, soon in the pipeline about the effect of shaving legs, arms, heads, all that sort of stuff. Beards um, as well? In the past, we've tested a beard. We yeah. put one on Chris Opie in the Wintel a few years ago, and he actually came out faster. Now, really? aerodynamics is a weird thing. Sometimes it's like, it's one of those things where 
it's system dependent. It's probably different on every single person. And there's so many variable variables in regards to like thickness of the, the thatch. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like the shape of the beard. Like yeah. how big your face is, how big, you know, there's so many variables there. That just sums up aero testing. We can't, it, we, so the answer is it depends. Okay. There might be on some people, it might be faster. So, I mean, the easiest start, I've thought of a great solution to this. Go back, watch the video where we put the beard on OP. Make sure if you want to be faster, you shape your beard like that video was. That was actually one from the fancy dress shop. Go to the fancy dress shop, buy your new beard. Um, more speed for everybody. Next question is from Lucifer. They say, I've been struggling with getting my cleats to fit far enough back in my shoes to sit with the ball of their foot. Downsize to the smallest shoe that they can fit in practically, but it still seems that the cleat is at its maximum point on the shoe. Um, it seemed okay when they used to use Shimano, but now they're using different pedals, so they've got a look system. Um, are there any adapters or anything that we can suggest to get their cleats a few millimeters back? Any thoughts? I mean, I'm a bit confused here. Like, I think they want to move their cleats further back on their shoe. So they want to have more of like a midfoot cleat. But yeah, they're saying well, the ball of their foot, but no, normally that is exactly where the cleat bolts are positioned. Yeah, maybe they have a slightly different shaped foot. So what I have seen in the past is a cleat adapter. And what this is, is a small piece which bolts onto the bottom of the shoe and then you attach your cleats to it and it allows you to have a far greater range of movement to position your cleat. Well, the other thing that people do do is drill their shoes. That's an like option. Some people, like, so in terms of where the, the bolt holes are positioned on the shoe for your cleat, yeah, that does vary from brand to brand. Some shoe brands are better at it than others yeah. and I feel put the poles in a better place. Um, whereas ergonomically, some, I, I feel I've had Less shoes in the optimal. past are not in the best place with the holes. Yeah. Um, but yes, there are people who have, for a long time, customised their shoes by, by drilling the, the, the soles yeah. to put their cleats. Well, I think, I feel like there are adapters out there if you don't feel brave enough to drill your own shoes. But if not, I think you have to take it to the extreme like that. Mm. Next question, uh, here you go. from Matt Pennycad, who says, Hi Alex and Dr. Oliver Bridgewood. <laughs> I have a 2010 aluminium CAD 8 Cannondale rim brake bike with Shimano Tiagra components and would like to upgrade to an electronic group set. Given that there's no internal cable routing on this bike, is there a way I could stay within Shimano components and upgrade to DI2 or is changing everything over to one of SRAM's fully wireless EPSAC group sets the way to go? Well, you actually did a, your own version of this with that um, aluminium canyon you upgraded to Durace. Yeah. So you must have come across some similar kind of issues. Yeah, well, with your frame, you might you might actually have to dremel it to yeah. make some internal cable routing, but it is, you're not routing big brake hoses and gear lines. It, the little DI2 cables are really easy to route through and they're really delicate. But it's also for that reason that they sort of are designed to be internally routed. Yeah. You wouldn't want to put a DI2 cable on the outside of your bike because it's too easy to damage it and snap it. Yeah, they're quite delicate, aren't they? Yeah, so if you fancy dremeling the bike and creating some holes so that you can route the cables through, you could go down that route. Um, although, it might be better to save yourself a hassle, and that is one of the beauty of the wireless systems, yeah. of, of using a wireless system. I think that's why a lot of people are using SRAM on time trial bikes, so they're using an older design of time trial bike that doesn't have the route in, get SRAM. My, um, if it were me, I'd, I'd go SRAM. Okay. Um, Chris says, any power losses from noisy free hubs over quiet ones? Oh, similar to an early question. Intuitively, noisy free hubs are just converting more kinetic energy into sound energy. In the era of marginal games, it seems silly to have loud free hubs. Am I missing something? I'm, this, I don't actually know the answer to this question. I don't know the answer, but I have a bit of a theory on it. So, yeah, like, the, like if energy is being converted from one form to another, always, right? The law yeah. of conservation of energy. So you're creating, you're converting the kinetic energy in your hub to sound energy and friction, heat, yeah, I get energy, it. right? So that's energy being lost from the system. So it does make sense that, yeah, like a louder hub is actually not maybe as fast. Well, I think the big difference is coming from the fact that all of the hubs are making a similar level of noise. And the big difference is how much grease is in there, dampening the effects of how much noise you hear. 
I think that's that's my theory on it. As you say, I don't know this for, for fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Um, next question Maybe is... Maybe we, we, we should investigate more on that one. We should We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. You go next. Uh, is this from... Adras. Oh. There you go. It's our last question. Oh, yeah, it is. There yeah. It is. Uh, from Adras Sasbo, who says, Hey, Alex and Ollie, I have a bike with semi-integrated cable routing. So there's a hole in my down tube that's designed to guide uh, two-thirds of the cables through it. But I'm switching to a wireless group set, lucky me. Yeah. Uh, so only one cable will be left. So my question is, is there a paste or anything I should use to cover the extra part of the hole oh. to keep water and other things out of my carbon frame? The manufacturer does not want to provide me a cover with the desired smaller hole. Thanks. Yeah, there's a couple of different options here. Normally manufacturers will make grommets or blanking plugs which will cover these holes up. But if you haven't got that, I would recommend the easiest option, a small piece of electrical tape or tape that matches up with the color of your frame. If you wanna go a slightly more advanced solution, you could get some silicon sealant, plug the hole up, smooth it all out. And if you wanna go all singing, all dancing solution, take your bike to somewhere like Fat Creations and they will fill the hole in, sand it, paint it, and it will look like that hole has never existed on your bike. Or, you, I reckon you would go 3D printing and make a custom one. Yeah, you could do that if you have got, got if a friend. If you have a try a 3D printer. A lot of people have them now. Yeah, yeah, they do to be Or fair. if your friend's got one, yeah. maybe, yeah. You could design a little plug quite easily. That's a good solution, I like that. Um, that's it, that was our last question of this week's TechNet. Hope we have answered your questions. As always, apologies if we haven't, but keep commenting in the comments section down below, and um, we'll get to it in a future week, won't we? See you in the next one. Ciao. Bye.